So good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you uh, for joining us today uh, for the webinar hosted by Versli Latva and Norwegian Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce. We are uh, hosting today's webinar in partnership with uh, um, uh, Office Samurai. My name is Lina Motskuta and I'm the Managing Director of Norwegian Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce. Today we are presenting how to quickly start automation after COVID-19. Well, maybe not even after, uh, I would say even why not to start it now? Because the coronavirus pandemic has pushed uh, us all into uncharted territory. And, um, and in some industries that's already leading to uh, an automation boom. This crisis can only, I think, speed up uh, changes that are already on the way. Therefore, today we will discuss how to identify automation opportunities and select the best uh, process to automate with uh, RPA. You will hear a professional overview, what uh, low-code solutions are in the market available and uh, uh, what are the most user-friendly, let's say, platforms for RPA. So get ready and uh, the change I think is now. So our presenter today is Dominik Jaskulski, Managing Partner at Office Samurai. Office Samurai is a consulting company specializing in process uh, improvement and robotic process automation. And the company uh, was established in, in Krakow in Poland. And in 2018, uh, they actually established a, a, an office or open a company also called Office Samurai Nordics here in Lithuania. And that's the aim is actually to, to become, uh, to help to support Lithuania um, to, to become a center of robotic process automation. Dominic himself has uh, over 10 years of experience in process automation and improvement. And Dominic uh, has been building uh, global structures, you know, in Mexico, Poland, Philippines, and then he has been setting up group-wide automation center of excellence and supported many, many uh, global uh, companies, global restructuration and transformation programs. Uh, just a little uh, housekeeping uh, before we get started. So if you have any questions uh, during the presentation, please, please type them in the Facebook comment section. I'll bring them up uh, during the presentation. I think we will make some um, short stops, you know, to cover those. And of course, at the very end, we will also have a, 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 a time for questions. So now without probably further ado, Dominic, if you are ready to start, I give a voice to you. Great. Right. Uh, thank you for introduction, Lina. And uh, konnichiwa and labadiana to, to, to everyone. Uh, nice to be here and, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm sharing my screen right now, so I hope you can see the presentation. Uh, we will talk on how to start quickly with uh, with automation after or, as you mentioned, Lina, even during uh the current uh, situation uh basically what we will be talking today uh i, I wanted to start with some uh, bushido code like uh, the the, the office, office samurai way so some principles for this uh, webinar i wanted to tell you a little about the situation and how I see it from automation perspective and also uh, show you the five samurai paths so automation tools that you can start using very quickly uh, and I hope at least some of them will be uh, useful uh, for you. So uh, yeah first uh, the principles. Uh, we will talk today about uh, process automation but Please remember that uh, whenever you have any business problem or maybe you have some challenges related uh, with uh, COVID-19 situation, don't think only about technology because sometimes there are different ways of solving the problems, maybe switching the process or modifying the process uh, will give you better results than the technology itself. Second one, uh, please ask your questions during presentation. Uh, please do it on Facebook, as Lina mentioned. Uh, we will answer some of the questions during presentation, the rest at the end. And uh, if there will be still an, an answered questions, uh, we will uh, send answers later. And also try 
tools that we are talking about. So, so uh, please, 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 please make sure that uh, you are not only listening to, to this webinar, but you, you actually uh, are checking maybe when I speak or after the, the webinar, the, the tools that I'm showing, because otherwise you will simply lose uh, 60 minutes of your life and uh, no, nobody will be able to give it back to you. Uh, if you want to get a touch of those solutions, it's usually harder to understand what they are about. And uh, actually, I, I will be speaking about pretty easy things and pretty easy ways how to start with automation. So please try at least one of the tools that we will be speaking today. Uh, COVID-19 and uh, automation. So how the situation uh, looks like. Uh, basically, a lot of companies are wondering, is it uh, is working from home uh, more productive than working in an office uh, environment? And I guess most of uh, managers would expect uh, that when people are working from home, it actually means that they are working from, from, from home. So that you you are basically doing a lot of different things, but maybe you spend only a little of time actually doing something related to your work. However, I have been speaking with a few heads of different shared services, uh, which basically uh, told me that, and those shared services, you need to know that they are measuring the work and the output uh, very precisely. So they know how many uh, tickets their teams have done, or they are measuring very precisely how many invoices have been posted, and so on and so on. So what those companies actually found in shared services is that uh, productivity actually uh, grow up during when people start working from home. So uh, the number of tickets or invoices or the work that they have been doing was much bigger than before when they have been working uh, in office environment. And I guess this is one of the most interesting uh, experiments that <laughs> we, we are seeing right now. Uh, another thing uh, to consider, is it possible to work 100% remotely? Uh, and I guess, two or three months ago, a lot of companies would tell you that, hey, our business cannot be done remotely. We, we need to have a direct connection to uh, our customers, or maybe uh, we cannot, from security reasons, allow our employees to work remotely, to have remote accesses to our uh, systems. And I actually know few companies uh, which allowed to access their systems remotely first time in 17 years. So in just a few days, they made a decision that was not possible to make during 17 years. So it's, I, I think it shows re really now nicely how the perception of people uh, change now. And the last question I would like to leave you with is how to uh, use this time properly because most probably some companies uh, will be simply trying to survive uh, COVID. But I guess because you are here, you are not one of those companies, right? That, that is only trying to survive, but you actually want to find out how you could use it. And I guess uh, trying to understand what you can do with your processes, how you can change the way, how you serve the customers, how you uh, how operations in your company works. Uh, this is a really good time for such kind of uh, thinking. And uh, I have already seen few organizations that uh, made a significant uh, changes to their business model. So they actually had to move from physical selling of goods to e-commerce or they, they had to uh, switch from working on in customer offices uh, and from working in customer offices to doing the projects entirely remotely. So, so I guess the shift of uh, our perception is, is really huge. 
And uh, today I would like to tell you about five automation tools that I hope uh, will help you uh, surviving those, those times, but also prepare your business for new challenges uh, after the pandemic is over. And uh, I was told by uh, organizers of this uh, webinar that um, basically there are some smaller companies uh, taking part in the webinar as well as medium ones and uh, so few, few, few bigger ones. So we have a mix of different size of uh, companies. And when I was preparing the presentation, I tried to show you a few tools that you can use in different type of organizations. So no matter if you are like uh, one person company or if you are working in a huge international bank, I, I hope most of those tools you should be able to uh, use in your work environment. Uh, first one, uh, pretty easy thing, but I guess still not, not very common or that common is uh, digital signatures. So because uh, during the time of COVID, we, it's much harder to print and send documents between the companies. Maybe all your employees are working from home. So how your assistant or secretary would uh, print uh, a, a document for you to be signed, how he or she uh, will send it to your customer. Uh, will it be needed that uh, a person, uh, uh, yeah, and so, 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 so basically the work with documents, it's uh, much more challenging in current situation. And if you haven't been using those kind of tools yet, I think this is really a good time uh, to try at least uh, some of them. I gave you two examples. So one is uh, Authenti and one is DocuSign. So these are two different tools, but I know on the market there are much, much more solutions you could use. So, so you could simply look for them uh, on Google. And uh, I just wanted to show you quickly how, uh, how those solution works. So, uh, uh, let me just quickly uh, log in here. Okay. So you can see now at DocuSign, this is uh, a portal or a web-based solution that can allow you to uh, sign documents remotely. So it's pretty easy to do. You simply... Uh, start the process, you upload uh, the document. I actually have one prepared, some, it's some, simply some random uh, NDA. Uh, I can be the only signer if only myself would need to sign the document or I can send it to someone for being signed. So just as an example, I will send it to Toma from uh, Office Samurai Nordics. And I can tell you that Toma uh, doesn't know that I will be sending documents to her. So she was not prepared for that. And uh, I can mm, select if she should receive a copy or she needs to sign it. So let's say that she should sign the document. And I can basically define where it should be signed. Okay. I'm just clicking next. I can uh, define the message and click send. And basically this is how I have sent document to potentially my uh, vendor or some company that I'm working with. And uh, now uh, Toma will receive an email with information that she should uh, sign uh, this, this document. She will, she will be able doing so 
even if she has not been using DocuSign before. So it will be enough for her if she will just sign up uh, there and she will be able to leave her uh, basic signatures. Of course, some of you may ask about uh, what with uh, the proper electronic signature or certified electronic signature. So there are different type of signatures uh, you can use and uh, you, you can use signatures based on your email address. So you would need to confirm with your email address that you is you, or you might use uh, a more significant certified uh, um, solutions. Uh, there's also a similar service called Authenti. So DocuSign is a quite a big global player. Uh, also, it means that they have uh, a little higher prices, but there are a lot of local providers like uh, Authenti is an example I know from Poland. Uh, they allow you to sign for free up to five documents uh, a month. So if you haven't been using uh, electronic signatures tools uh, yet, then uh, uh, this is my strong su suggestion to at least log to one of those tools. So either Authenti or DocuSign or look for some other solution and simply try it yourself and see how, how this works. Uh, okay, so this was the first tool and I think we have now some time for a question, one or two. Uh... I just probably would like to remind uh, speakers to 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 send their co command in, to the command box to to send their questions, but uh, for now I think that for the moment we we don't have so I think we we can move on. Okay, sure. So another solution I would like to show you that is also pretty easy to use and uh, might might be interesting for you for a very quick way of automation is a solution called Zapier. So you can find it until uh, under address zapier.com. And uh, basically what the solution does, it has integrations to many existing applications and systems. So let's say that uh, you have different channels of communication uh, with your customers, like you can have uh, Facebook, uh, you can connect to your customers with uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn and uh, Mailbox. And you would like to have uh, all those messages that your customers are sending to you in one place. So this is pretty uh, to set up in uh, Zapier. Uh, some basic functionalities of Zapier are also available for free. So uh, you simply sign up and uh, you can use for free some basic functionalities. And to show you how this work, I will create a very short uh, zap. So I'm just clicking make new zap. Let's say that I would like to connect our Office Samurai uh, page at uh, Facebook with our uh, Outlook account. So I could choose up uh, and even uh, that will start the process. So let's say this will be Facebook Messenger. Uh, and what will be the trigger? Uh, so this will be new message sent to my page. So I guess a lot of your businesses have your uh, pages on Facebook and sometimes I, Actually, this is me because I'm not checking Facebook very frequently. And sometimes I can see that uh, someone has been waiting a few days uh, for answer because nobody checked that there is a new uh, information or, or new message. Uh, so I simply click continue. I would need to select to which uh, account I should... Uh, Mm, integrated with. So I will do it with my private account and I will look for, yeah, here we have Office Samurai. Because on Facebook, uh, my profile is related to Office Samurai page. So I simply click continue. I can test 
if the connection works. And yeah, it's, it works properly. Uh, so it, this example was not prepared before. I'm, I'm working like on a live uh, system. What you normally would need to do, you would need to uh, confirm on Facebook uh, that you are fine, that Zapier will be uh, connecting to your uh, company page. So here I would, uh, as a next step, I would like Zapier to create uh, an email. So I could, for example, use Microsoft Outlook. I could connect it to some CRM like HubSpot. I could send uh, an email using Gmail or even uh, um, save all messages from uh, Facebook Messenger to Google Sheets. So in this scenario, uh, we would like uh, to receive an email. So I will simply click Microsoft Outlook here and I can uh, decide what the system should do. So in this case, I would like it to send uh, an email to me. I click continue. Uh, now I need to select to which account this should be related to. And here I basically can type uh, who should receive an email. So for example, we could set again that Toma will receive a message whenever someone writes to Office Samurai on a Facebook. So Toma Office Samurai .com. Uh, I can define some subject like new message on Facebook. I can uh, define the body format like HTML and I can define that uh, a person called full name, sender full name, wrote as um, time the following message and message text. So uh, this is pretty simple example, but you can see that I actually defined this uh, integration between Facebook and Outlook in like three or four uh, minutes. So I can test it now. I hope it works. Yeah, test was successful. So I can uh, um, now turn it on. So this is already turned on on a live system. So if any of you would write something on Office Samurai page uh, using uh, Facebook Messenger, Toma will receive an email that a new person uh, contacted us. Uh, so I guess, I, I, I hope that this is uh, uh, pretty easy, but uh, the question is what else you can uh, do with it. So they basically have a lot of uh, examples of uh, what, what different things Zapier could do for you. So it could, for example, translate tickets. So whenever you receive ticket in your ticketing system, it could translate it between two languages and move it back uh, and, and save it again in your ticketing system. So it can uh, move tickets around in your existing systems. So if you are using, of course, an, uh, uh, systems like Freshdesk or Zendesk, uh, it can send you notifications. Uh, so if, you, if there are no notifications in uh, certain applications, you can set up those notifications also in uh, Zapier. Uh, it can make tasks based on some events or it can add customers to email newsletters. So if you would like to automate uh, the newsletter sign up, you, you can actually use uh, different tools. So let's say that you have one form or one place where customers can uh, sign up for your newsletter. And then you have a MailChimp or some other mailing system uh, that would need to, 
to, to know uh, which people signed up. And uh, you can create such connections uh, use, using Zapier. And those connections that I'm showing you here, uh, they are uh, free of charge. So as I mentioned, Zapier is free uh, with some limited functionalities. If you would like to make uh, more complicated things like a flow of several integrations, that then you would need to pay for the tool, but it's not that uh, expensive. Uh, you can also provide a support for your customers on social media. So you can potentially connect Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, or uh, Facebook. Uh, and uh, for example, create uh, tickets in your ticketing systems or emails, or uh, send some general messages to your customers when they uh, write to you. So there are a lot of different ways uh, what you can do with Zapier. Uh, there are also a lot of uh, automation inspirations that, uh, that, 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 that you can use, uh, either in project management, uh, I think in customer support. This might be especially important uh, during a COVID-19 situation, but it's, it can also be related to e-commerce or even some uh, human resources processes like, like approvals. Uh, so I know that some of your companies might uh, not be able to use uh, Zapier. So I also wanted to show you a similar solution based on Office uh, 365. But uh, uh, I just wanted to check with you, Lina, are there any uh, questions? I think that... Uh... For the moment, we can we can move on. We have uh, just re with reference, you know, to the first question, but I think that we can continue. We'll mm -hmm. come to that later. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, if there will be more more questions, we can also answer them uh, at the end. So the next one, uh, this is called uh, now Power Automate. However, in the past, this solution was called Microsoft Flow. You can find it easily under address flow. Uh, dot microsoft uh, dot com and uh, if you have office 365 uh, you will be also able to use a lot of functionalities in the systems without any additional costs so i guess this might be an interesting uh, um, solution for comp for bigger companies that cannot use zapier because of some security issues but still i guess even the big corporations most of them are now using office 365 and this is a part of uh, office 365 so uh, if if you have it you, you should check this address flow.microsoft.com and the concept here is uh, quite similar however you can see that uh, uh, those automations are constructed in a little different way. So, uh, so you can see on this page some templates uh, that you can use. For example, you can start uh, an approval when a new item is added to a SharePoint list or to uh, forms. So you can use your existing uh, environment in your company like SharePoint, Office 365, uh, Outlook, uh, just just to create uh, very easy automations. Uh, what might be also interesting for you or what I found uh, useful here, uh, there is, for example, uh, a notification uh, in case your boss is contacting you. So for example, get a push notification when you receive an email from your boss. It means that if your boss, or you can set it that maybe CEO of your company writes you an email, you are receiving an additional push notification on your phone that, uh, hey, watch out, uh, the big boss sent me uh, a message. And this is actually pretty easy to uh, set up. So you can see it now which so how how this works 
You can also see, see that I already have it connected to my Office 365. I simply click Create Flow. Uh, the system will work now for a moment. So it looks pretty easy, but I can tell you that even in a bigger uh, companies, we have been using it uh, for in some processes, for example, to gather approvals. So earlier those approvals have been done uh, via email and uh, we wanted to have it in one place, in one system. So we have been using uh, Microsoft Flows, now Power Automate, uh, to do those things. So here you can see the flow that uh, has been created. So on a new email, so I can define uh, who is sending the email. So let's say Toma is my uh, big boss. Ah, I can even select her here. Uh, so when I receive an email from Toma, uh, if, if Toma is my uh, manager, I will get a push notification. And of course, I would need also to, uh, to, to allow it on my uh, mobile phone. But basically, this is it. So you configure uh, your flow in a graphical way. You don't need any programming skills to do it. Uh, and at the end, you simply click Save. And you can start using uh, now uh, this flow. I, I, oh, it's even turned on already. So if Tama would send me now an email, I would get a push notification. So, so you can see that it took me like one minute uh, to create it. Of course, it's not so easy, but uh, you can uh, basically play with it around. So if, you would, if your company is using Twitter, you can look for different connectors or for different flows uh, related to Twitter, like you can save tweets that include a specific hashtag uh, to your SharePoint list or to Excel. This might be useful if you are, if you want to monitor all uh, tweets with a specific hashtag, like uh, maybe you have a hotel business in, in Lithuania and you would like to know uh, if someone writes something related to travel to Lithuania on Twitter, you would like to be informed about it. So you can collect that information using uh, Microsoft Flows or Power Automation now, uh, simply by defining uh, it uh, in such graphical way. So it's the same with Facebook. So you can also connect Facebook uh, to your Office 365 account, uh, but uh, this also works with uh, Google Gmail or Google Drive. Uh, for example, you can save attachments from emails that you receive uh, to your Google Drive. And this is one of a flow that I'm using right now personally uh, for the invoices I receive, because in addition to Office Samurai, I also have uh, my personal company here in Poland, and each month I'm receiving a couple of invoices. And in the past, I would need to go into every email to open the email and to save invoice in a specific place on, in, on my uh, shared drive. And uh, after a few months, I really get bored of doing it uh, uh, every month. Also, my accountant was chasing me all the time that where are the invoices, could you finally uh, save them? Uh, so uh, what I did uh, was actually a very simple uh, flow uh, on in this uh, application. And this flow is basically saving uh, some of the invoices. Like uh, I got uh, like standard invoices from few companies like from an uh, internet provider. And uh, basically, this is very easy to set up. So when a new email arrives, 
and I can define the subject of this email, then uh, there is a new file created uh, on in this path on my, on my uh, shared drive. And the attachments from this email are being saved here. So it's, uh, as, 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 as you can see, there are some fields that you need to define. So it's not like the most, the, the, the easiest tool uh, on the planet, but it's actually pretty simple. And even if I haven't been using any flows, uh, in the past, when I first saw the system, I was able to uh, actually uh, create a my first flow in around 15-20 minutes. So this is pretty, pretty easy to use. So uh, quite often in different companies, we have been using this for approvals, uh, for collecting data from different sources. So let's say you can have a web form created in Microsoft Forms or some other application, and you want to save uh, data from this form on your SharePoint, or maybe in Teams, or maybe uh, you would like to have an email being sent or save it in Excel spreadsheet. So all those functionalities that are not covered by uh, those tools, can be done, uh, th all those things can be done in uh, Power Automate. It, you can also schedule your flow. So it means that uh, your flow will start automatically each Monday. So let's say you would like to receive a weather notification. Uh, so you can write weather and... Uh, oh. Okay, and uh, here, you can get today's weather forecast for my current location. So based on your phone, uh, you can also receive uh, weather reports uh, to your email and phone, and you can define different ways how, how you receive information about uh, weather in your current location. So if, if you are surprised uh, with a snow, uh, because I heard it was, almost snowing a, a, a little in uh, Lithuania today. Uh, if, if you would have such uh, notification, it, it might be a little easier for you to take. And you, you can see that you can connect different applications with each other. So you can connect it also with uh, Twitter, again, Facebook, Power BI. So basically all the applications that uh, we are using on a daily basis. Uh, this is pretty similar when it comes to functionalities to Zapier, but I think for bigger companies or for corporations, uh, this might be more interesting solutions because this is part of Office 365. It means that you have the same uh, security level as with Outlook and other Microsoft tools uh, that you are using. So uh, if your company doesn't allow to use uh, Zapier, uh, to create simple automations, you can also uh, try using Power Automate. So are there any questions about this one? Uh, yeah, we have a few questions. Um, another, Lina, is um, asking, mm -hmm. um, uh, you might have already discovered some, some points, but uh, I will read it. Um, is sure. it possible to see SharePoint flow actions log easily without using Power App? Log is needed to track history of approvals, uh, who, when approved, and what commands were left in the form for exact requests? Uh, well, it's, I, I guess, uh, hmm, that, that's, that, that's a good question. Uh, so whenever you are uh, using an approval workflow in Power Automate, uh, you can have those workflows uh, defined in, 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 in different ways. Like uh, if you are using SharePoint, you can register who and when uh, did the approval and change a status of a ticket, for example, on a SharePoint. Uh, based on this uh, approval. 
So it's, it's, it's possible to get some information about those approvals. But if, if there are no such functionalities in those templates, you can basically uh, try to create it yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope that this, this will help. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the best way is simply to uh, go to the tool and play around or, or, or even Google it. Okay. Um, Justina asks, uh, mm -hmm. is it possible to use Microsoft for pools like Doodle, uh, excluding voting for the most convenient date for the meeting? Um, let's see. Uh, I'm looking here if I, I was looking here, here for Doodle, but I cannot see it. Uh, we can also look for some survey functionalities. Ah, okay. So there are surveys like survey one, two, three, or survey based on Microsoft Forms that you could potentially use for uh, voting. I know that this is not as easy to use as Doodle because I, I'm also a fan of uh, Doodle. This is very easy application when you need uh, a simple voting functionality, but uh, you can have similar functionalities here, uh, but uh, you can basically use uh, the connectors that are already here in Power Automate, like Survey One to Three. I see they have Survey Monkey. Uh, they have, of course, Microsoft Forms. Um, what else? Yeah, there are some connections to Salesforce uh, or Kaizala. Uh, so you 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 basically what you are what you usually need to do is to look what templates or what functionalities there are. So in case of Doodle, I would simply try to look for Doodle integrations, but unfortunately uh, in Power Automate, there are none. Maybe Zapier have it. Uh, oh, okay, Zapier, Zapier actually have it. So you could, integrate with Doodle uh, using Zapier. Okay, uh, maybe we will leave the rest of the questions uh, at the end. I will move to another tool, if, if that's fine. Uh, okay, so another solution I wanted to uh, show you. Uh, this is Windshuttle SAP automation. So I know that uh, not every company uh, has SAP, but for companies that are already using SAP, this might be an interesting alternative for some uh, heavy IT projects. So just to show you what, uh, what it is, uh, I have it, uh, so I have prepared uh, a sh short movie. This movie is, of course, on uh, YouTube, so so you can also check for it yourself. But the main concept is that you basically select to which SAP system uh, you would like to log in. You provide your credentials. You log in to, to SAP, and you enter which transaction in SAP you would like to automate. So uh, the, the wind shuttle will now connect to SAP and in SAP, you basically now do all the uh, things you would normally do in this transaction. So you are just working on SAP like you would uh, normally do it. This is an example of uh, posting uh, uh, vouchers in, in, in SAP. So just by doing some uh, general posting of documents in SAP and you basically work on it uh, like you would normally do. But then uh, in Windshuttle, when it uh, ends, you see now all the fields that you have been using and Windshuttle translate those fields uh, to Excel. I just want to show it to you how this will 
so how the results will work. Ah, okay. And here you have the same transaction, but this transaction is now uh, in Excel. So instead of uh, working directly on SAP, you can now copy paste data uh, in Excel. You can have like thousands of lines uh, that you would like to post to different uh, accounts uh, in SAP. Uh, and uh, when you are ready, you simply uh, can validate if this works, uh, simulate the process, and at the end, uh, you simply click Run. And all the transactions that you see now in Excel format, they have been posted uh, to your SAP system. So uh, this is like pretty uh, pretty solution to be used in companies that are heavily based on Excel. And it can work not only in accounting, but also in HR, logistics, production, or any other modules of SAP, either the old client or the new one. And uh, I also know that Windshuttle right now, they have, because of COVID-19, they have a special promotion. So they offer new customers to use uh, their tool uh, for free. So if, if, if you haven't been using Windshuttle yet, you can connect to, to the company. You can ask them for a free version of, of, of the tool, for example, for four months or six months or half a year. And you won't pay for the licenses. And also, you don't need to promise them that you will be buying their licenses. So for a long period of time, you can use this uh, tool for free. And they are you, giving it for free uh, because they want to help other companies uh, with uh, changes that are related to COVID-19. Of course, probably some companies will uh, live with their solution after the pandemic. Uh, but I guess this is a nice, nice thing to try. Um, so I won't go deeper into Windshuttle. Do you have any questions about it? Um, for the moment, we can continue with the presentation, yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, sure. So Windshuttle uh, makes sense in bigger companies that are using SAP. If your company doesn't have SAP, of, of course, you won't be able to use it. However, the last tool I would like to show you uh, it's robotic process uh, automation. Uh, so tools like UAPath Automation Anywhere or uh, Win Automation, uh, all of those tools can be checked by you or your company for, for free. So they have uh, community versions that you can simply download from uh, the page of those companies and try to, to use them. They also have a lot of online trainings. Uh, however, this technology is a little different because uh, this uh, robotic process automation automate work by imitating what we are doing on different applications. So uh, Zapier or Power Automate, you had those integrations between the applications. In case of RPA, the RPA uh, robot is working on graphical interface, so on top of existing applications. Um, and uh, it's you, you can basically automate anything with it. So uh, there are no limits like with Zapier or Power Automate that you need to have a specific integration to a specific system uh, to use it. So it's much more uh, flexible and it's a little similar to recording macro in Excel. But uh, I guess the main difference is that you can use RPA on potentially every digitalized process. So of course your process needs to be done on computer to automate it using RPA, but there are a lot of areas where uh, you could use it. I won't go now uh, through all those examples uh, we will send you presentation after the, the, the webinar or, or we will make it uh, available to you. 
So this way you will know wh where this could be used. But uh, in the past, most companies have been actually using RPA in areas like in back office areas, like finance, HR, procurement. However, because of COVID-19, I guess the most benefits now you can have it now by by using it in a customer service area. So pr processes related to serving your customer or to onboarding customer in, in your system, uh, because th th this will be much, much uh, better uh, s s support to you. Uh, than uh, just doing some back office work. And just to show you a concept, I hope you will be able to uh, see it. So uh, this is uh, a movie presenting one of the robots that we have created for a internet shop. So you can see, it, see here an algorithm for the robot. And you can see that again, uh, you don't need uh, like, very hard programming skills to create it because uh, those algorithms are being created in a graphical way. So uh, robotic process automation, I would say it's uh, more difficult than using Power Automate or than using Zapier or Windshuttle. So this is for a little more advanced users. But I know that a lot of people who, for example, knows VBA macros or uh, know some basic concepts of programming can learn it uh, pretty fast. So, so you need around two weeks to learn uh, basics of, of RPA. Uh, so here, uh, what the robot will be doing, it will be connecting uh, two system. One system where the client is, uh, so in, in one system, this is uh, internet shop where you have all orders from clients and another system uh, which, uh, ha which is responsible for the finance part of the company. So there was no possible integration because between uh, two of them. And all you can see now is not being done by human, but uh, all those actions on the screen are being done by this uh, software bot. So the software bot is moving between the applications and it's uh, reading data from one application and translating it uh, to uh, invoice or some receipt in another one. So the process is pretty easy, but this is basically the main uh, process in this internet shop, right? You, you have an order uh, you need to create invoice for the order. Uh, and also what the robot is doing later, it's also printing uh, in a warehouse the order uh, that needs to be sent to the customer. So the employees in the warehouse, they have, they have on the printer uh, that a specific order needs to be prepared for a customer. And also robot uh, is printing together with order the invoice or received that they should add to it. So all this data flow in this company is being automated. You just need people who are uh, preparing goods and sending those goods to, to your customer. Of course, you can use this concept basically on every system that you have, but you need uh, digitalized data. So uh, if, if you are working on a handwritten orders or on emails, this might be a little harder to automate. But if you have a specific data input to your processes, uh, you could potentially also use uh, robotic process automation. And to uh, sum up quickly, uh, yeah, I, I, actually, th this is it. Uh, so we we have a few minutes left for questions. And if, if you would like to start using RPA, just just one more sentence. I I really recommend you to try with one of those tools. So you might want to try with Automation Anywhere, Win Automation, or UA Path. Uh, and all of those tools allow you to download a community version 
to your desktop and simply try how it works. Okay. So we, I, 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 Lina, I guess we can move to questions if, if there are any. Yeah. Um, thank you, Dominic. Uh, so we have a question why this asks, uh, are there any uh, RPA tools for Mac? Uh, I'm not aware of. And, and, and unfortunately, uh, most business applications and most office applications are in a Windows environment. So uh, there could be some, some automation tools for Mac, and I, I'm pretty sure there are some. Uh, but in a business environment, uh, like we are almost always use, use, using uh, Windows. So I'm not aware of those tools. Sorry. OK. Uh, yeah, you, we, we almost uh, ran out of time. But um, just uh, a few like general maybe questions to you. Uh, in what type uh, of companies you find the biggest actually potential mm -hmm. for automation? Uh, that that's a good good, good question. Uh, so usually the the bigger the company is, the bigger is potential. But I have also seen a companies with just few employees that were smart enough to start using uh, those tools that I showed you in some uh, smart ways just to support their, their business. And it was uh, pretty easy for, 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 for them to start. So like uh, e-commerce companies or logistics companies or potentially every big company that have uh, uh, big of, uh, like back office operations. Mm -hmm. And what uh, what are the most common barriers, let's say, to automation within an organization? What are the most common barriers? Huh. Mm -hmm. I, I I guess uh, that one of the biggest barrier is is usually the attitude of of uh, people. Uh, so if some people don't want to 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 automate the work or they cannot see how this could be automated. This is pretty big barrier. So together with automation project, you usually also need to think about change management. So how to convince people, how to uh, involve them uh, in the project and how to show them that it, uh, it makes sense. So basically, try to engage them as well. Yes, yes, that's that's a nice word. Yeah, you you basically need need to engage people. Also, sometimes the challenges are more technical, like related to uh, some specific application or specific process or not digitalized process. But most of the obstacles that I know uh, from different projects are usually either related to processes, so how the process should look like uh, in the company and also to people. Uh, then also, since, since we are kind of uh, closing up already, so what mm -hmm. should companies be doing to ensure this kind of smooth transition to RPA? Like some, some key points, tips. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I guess uh, one of the mo most important thing here is not, not to think only about robotic process automation. It's much, much more important to think about your processes in general and also to um, like it's, it's much more important to create a culture. Uh, so, 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 for example, if you will be uh, trying to engage your employees in the projects, or you maybe after the meeting you could uh, tell to some of your employees, "Hey, could you check this DocuSign or some other application for me?" So, if people will get involved in those activities, if they will uh, feel how those tools could help them and help your business. Uh, it doesn't matter which uh, technology you will use. If this will be RPA, if this will be like normal IT project or any different kind of the project, because the, the culture of your company will be supporting 
uh, the, the, the automations in general. Okay, so it looks like we've covered, I think, uh, all our questions. Dominic, oh, okay. is there anything uh, you wanted to cover before we wrap up? Uh, no, no, I, I just uh, wanted to thank all the participants for joining us and uh, Japanese way, arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> Great. So uh, thank you, Dominic. I, I'm sure that we will be, since, since we have this company also here in Lithuania, we want to, to, to support, you know, Lithuania uh, uh, on that. Uh, so we'll, we'll organize some more, you know, of those uh, sessions, I think. So mm -hmm. thank you once again to you. Very much appreciate. And on behalf of also Versilia Tova, the co-organizer of the session, Thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, we appreciate uh, you being here with us today. And hopefully you heard some good uh, information, had some useful advice. Thanks again uh, to Versili Latova uh, and uh, see you next time. So follow Versili Latova Norwegian Lithuanian Chamber social media to find out on uh, about other future uh, webinars. So thank you and stay healthy. Thank you. Bye.